you know, I build a virtual studio and I, I, I've got a paid speech tomorrow and I did a free one yesterday for my college and had a technical failure in the middle. So I'm, I'm redoing everything to try to figure out. It's, it's a real high wire act. It, it is. Stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's like this Robbie Samuels where we, where we initially met, he, you know, he refers to it as, you know, you're landing a jet plane, right? And you're, you're trying to kind of keep all the controls and everything uh, rolling at the same time with your meeting. Yeah, well, I think it's like playing an organ and singing or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you turn up a little bit? I'm as loud as I can go, but yeah. you're okay. a little is that, is that better? Is that, is that, uh, is that yeah. okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's, um, I'm just, I, I, um, I'm just going through my, my laptop mic. I usually use the Yeti, but I was having some issues with a little bit of. No, break. actually it was me. I, I was still okay. stuck different. That's I was okay. stuck in my MacBook, which is closed. So, okay. but, there we go. There we go. <laughs> So listen, I, I appreciate you taking some time because I understand. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've got a tremendous history in the travel industry. Um, like you just, 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 just make sure I've got this correct. So you were originally sure. with American Airlines. And well, it started at the beginning. Favor. I was a right. I was a travel agent, right? A physical travel agent in the seventies. Wrote tickets yeah. by hand. Made reservations by phone. Yes. Um, then I jumped to a computer company that sells sold computers to travel agents. Uh, we sold that company to American Airlines, and then I was an American for 18 years um, in IT, uh, in marketing, and then IT. And I, I ran uh, applications development and, and operations, and then I was CIO. And then when I was CIO, we started Travelocity inside uh, American and Sabre. Sabre is the you know, company that automates travel agents. Right. Um, and and I... I actually ran product marketing for Sabre as well. So I did all the product design and that stuff. And then uh, we spun Travelocity out of Sabre. Um, and so that was uh, a public company. I ran that for six years and then they bought it back. And uh, then I became a consultant and a speaker and worked for a VC firm. And we got this idea of vertical search for travel uh, and so they funded it and we started Kayak. I was chairman there for eight years uh, until we sold that to Priceline. Took it public and then sold it to Priceline. Um, and then I got a call a few years later from Ginny Rometty, the chairman of IBM, and she said, can you come and teach IBM Watson about travel? So uh, I did that, started another company. Uh, that one blew up after four years, didn't make it. Right. Uh, and I've been on a you know, bunch of boards, 17 public and private boards as well right. so yeah no i mean your 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 experience in the industry is is wide and deep and i'm, gonna, I'm, I'm certainly gonna I'm, this drape back here i think the sun is sure interfering with the zoom yeah. okay. i'm sort of losing the top of my head that's okay it's, it's just giving you this great halo it's it's <laughs> yeah well, it's virtual hair is what i need that's better but uh, I was I was taking a look at some of your videos and stuff uh, on your website and, and as your speaker on disruption, innovation, and, you know, certainly you've been able to kind of parlay that into, which is an, an amazing space right now that yeah. kind of you're navigating, right? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. honestly, travel is like one of the ones that has been like slammed, probably Disrupted, the hardest. Totally wrecked, likely yeah. be the, It'll likely be the last to kind of recover, really. It's, I think so. I don't know that business travel ever will. Yeah. Um, you know, this is so easy. Yeah. And you know, I've been doing this for years because I live up in the mountains. And so I do all these virtual pitches and I listen to virtual pitches. And, um, you know, I'm glad it didn't take over because I'm a speaker. But um, there was an article in the journal yesterday, I think, that a guy said, I'm actually closing more sales uh, virtually than I did physically because I can force the people to watch the whole PowerPoint. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. It is cool. And it's, you know, it's certainly any kind of research I've been doing into, because my, my background is marketing, right? But I've got this, you know, this other, you know, kind of called the side hustle with Carry On Queen. But any research we've been doing around the marketing side is, you know, we're seeing a, a huge disruption in consumer behavior and certainly around the way we're working and, and the likelihood that people, you know, there's going to be a significant number of people that are going to want to kind of stay with, with some of the new habits um, or at least. Well, and the companies question, you know, are, are yeah. saying, hey, this yeah. is uh, this is working. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't need all this space. Yeah. Productivity. I need it right now with COVID because I can only put half the people back in the building. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in New York, they can't figure out how to get up the elevator. 
right. by the time they all get everybody in, they have to have lunch. Right. Before they leave. <laughs> so it's, it's really a mess. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I think there, there'll be a lot of disruptions that will stay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm I'm interested. I, I watched the uh, the video that uh, you sent me a link to an interview that you did around you know the travel industry and some yeah. of the you know the changes that happened. Like, because you were with Travelocity at 9/11, which was like the last major disruption for right. travel. Uh, and I think you noted that at that time, you know, travel you know was off like 70 percent. Now it's like off 90 percent with the airlines, and um, you know just the. It, and what it's going to take to get, uh, you know, to get people back on planes. And um, I mean, I, I watched, you know, I, I watched, um, you know, you, you talked quite a bit about PR and publicity and kind of getting that message out. So yeah, I think you flush that out a bit more. And then I want to ask you some specific questions okay. about other things. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think, look, it, it, normally, uh, you know, in the old days, uh, travel companies tried to get people to travel. So they would advertise to get people to go places, you know, and, and CVBs and countries still do, right? right? But airlines, um, you know, used to advertise, do brand advertising for service and meals and that kind of stuff. Um, my dad was the advertising manager at Louis Burnett that did fly the friendly skies of United. You know, that, that, that was a big deal. And when I was at American, we were the on-time machine. That all stopped. There's no television advertising for airlines anymore, except for international carriers that I that I see, mm -hmm. um, and that's okay because the targeted price advertising is is what it's all about. But not now, right. you know. Now they have to tell their their COVID story, and and I've seen articles with great differences between like Delta and American, where people say you know Delta really has it. All their video screens are talking about it. Um, they've got the six foot markers on the ground. They're really encouraging mask use. In American, it's like, yeah, there's some duct tape on the ground and there's some. Right? Yeah, um, and I know I've seen some articles where, you know, really discrepancy of experiences for sure on yeah. American, right? And, it's, and that's damaging from a publicity standpoint. Because, it is. Because it gets shared on be... social media, right? And they don't have right. that narrative. Yeah. Right. But, and, you know, the interviewer on. on uh, Investors Business Daily said, well, you know, social is the only place to be. And I said, you know, maybe I'm just 72, but I don't agree. You know, this is about changing behavior. And social is good. But most of the information about what they're doing is on their website, which, to which no one is going, because no one is going anywhere. Right. I got three emails today trying to convince me to travel with more miles. But they didn't talk about COVID. Right. You know, well, duh. It, that, it, it, that's tone deaf. Like that. that Let's is, see. What will I risk my life for? Yeah. Hundred thousand miles. I'll die for. That. <laughs> yeah, well, that's stupid. You know, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. So no, I know. I, I got something. It was. It was basically saying that you know I needed to book something, right? Or I was going to lose some miles, right? And it's like, oh, for God's sakes, right? Like I just, I just, I think I traded in for a fifty dollar gift card for something. You know, a few things just to kind of, you know, keep it active the right? starbucks card or, yeah. yeah yeah exactly it was just like okay well i don't want to and hotels or you know i said the same thing I, i've got it my daughter's gonna have a child next week i hope to be our first grandkid and we're gonna go down not right away because right. her, her mom is gonna be there but we'll be going down and and stay in the marriott across the street well hey they've got a deal 72 hours the rooms are empty before you check in they've got stickers on the doors they won't come in the room. They don't change your sheets. You know, and you make your own bed. Right. Um, that's all good. And that's a great story. Right. Yeah. I and guess, I, I mean, it's, is it going to take some standards like across airlines, uh, you know, and, and then well, get, I don't think, you, I don't think in the United States, you're going to see that, you know, our government is, thinks COVID is over. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so the cases are growing, but COVID is over. They just declared right. itself. Right. It was like we had a, evangelical minister who said, I throw you out, COVID. I throw you out of my church. Uh, you know, he died. Um, so it didn't really work. Um, and so I don't think there'll be standards. I mean, the airlines have gotten together and in this week and are talking about better mask enforcement. Right. Uh, they would love for the government to pass a rule that you had to wear a mask on an airplane because then it would be like electronics. Right. And they would say, the FAA says, you know, you right. got to do it. And it's not me saying it. And yes, but as it is, they, they don't have that clout. 
No, and you know, Costco here in the US will throw you out if you don't have a mask. Well, they can't throw you off an airplane in the middle of a flight. Which just seems crazy because the exposure risk. Yeah, it's much higher. Yeah. So there was yeah. an article today about um, face shields. Right. And I have one of those, right. got it early. I haven't worn it much, but they're saying now that might be a better protection mm. for short-term contact. You know, if you walk by somebody who sneezes, you're not going to get it in your eye. Right. And you can right. be infected in your eyes. And so, you know, I'm saying yeah. that because you're probably not going to get in the grocery store. You're not there long enough. Right. You know, but with a barber or in an airplane, you are there long enough. Right. And, it and seems there was a doctor last week who said he was very carefully, wore a mask, he flew coast to coast, he got COVID. And he thinks he got it in his eyes. Wow, interesting. Right? So, uh, you know, I think they're doing all the things they can do. Airplanes are, you know, I, I read, I mentioned on the on the interview that I read this thing from PBS that said, going to hotels is safer than getting a haircut. Hmm. Um, yeah, and there, there is, yeah, there's that article going around that's rating the different activities. Yeah, right. right, right, right. It would have airline travel at five or something, but it was, there's a real discrepancy where, you know, two people said medium, one said super high, one said low. And it, it seemed to be, it was the, the differences were made around, you know, the, the time that you're on the plane and just then also the, the discrepancy of standards. Between well, and I also think, I don't think it's really much about standards because what we're hearing more and more is that surfaces really aren't the problem. Mm. We thought they were. Mm. And long-term contact is worse. Right. Um, and so, you know, a one hour flight, you got an empty seat next to you. The guy isn't sneezing. Right. Um, you know, you're probably fine. And you got a mask on, a good mask. Right. You're probably okay. And in a 10 hour flight to Europe next to a, a coffer, right. you know, you're, you're probably you're, in trouble. You're hooped. Yeah. 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 And, and I think also the other thing that hasn't been, it's beginning to be well explained because there's been, you know, a lot of darkness shed on this subject by a lot of people is that, you know, this affects old people way more than young people. Right. And although there are some 40 to 50s, you know, mostly it's like 80% of the people who are dead are over 70 or some number like right. that. It's at the CDC. Right. So, right. you know, look, I've had prostate cancer. I had radio, radioactive seeds implanted March 3rd. You know, I'm at high risk. Right. And, right. and my wife has long-term Lyme disease and immunosuppressive drugs. We can't go anywhere. Yeah, you're not, you're not yeah. getting, I, I don't know. They'll lock, they'll I, lock I'm me assuming up. you're not getting yeah. on a plane if no, any longer no. period of time unless no, there's a... And, yeah. and, you know, I don't know if I ever will until um, um, we have a vaccine. But, you know, if you're, if you're 40 and healthy, you know, you're probably just going to get sick. Yeah. Now, you could get really bad, but, you know, people, I, I think there's a a gradient, you know, we sort of treated everybody the same at the beginning, and that was probably good. We probably saved millions of lives, but. And I think we're yeah. probably going to see like adventure travel opening up, you know, like, yeah, like the one, the people who are feel less risky um, or less at risk will be the ones that will go for the early, early flights. But I mean, airlines can't function on, on, on half capacity and no. still make money, right? It was, I, I read no, something like, I mean, like it's, 70% look, it, that was kind of the break even, right? And so- Yeah, I mean, eventually term, prices, or prices are going to have to go up. They're going to have to go and, up for the they cost. They can't for do sure. that. So there'll be a cycle of, of low price to get people back. Right. And then, you know, somebody, hopefully, you know, one or, not hopefully, but if, if somebody goes bankrupt, right. then you have right. less capacity, then you can yeah. raise price. Right, and no, and that no. likely, I'm I'm assuming that's probably you know once federal aid runs out in the fall, there's got to be some consolidation, I would think. Well, you know, I I'm not for attribution because I work there and I still have a free pass on American, but those guys are idiots. Yeah, they borrowed money to buy back their stock. Right. I mean, right. I'm I'm a big opposer of stock right. buybacks anyway. Right. I think it's just a joke. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, to borrow money to buy back your stock. Now they're highly leveraged. Their oh, stock is worth it. Yeah, that's hugely leveraged. And so. you know, they both both Delta and United or American and United mortgaged their frequent flyer programs right. for fifty right. billion dollars. Right. So people people would buy those in a minute. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what happened in Canada, right? That yeah. the programs were private private. Yep. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you see? I mean, do you see a role? Because I was I was investigating this uh, this round. Uh, it was contact. 
uh, tracing or exposure notification, which is kind of Google and Apple's kind of solution to it. Yeah, right. Um, where, because there's so much, it's like a patchwork, which is, I mean, it, you know, I guess it's, it's all about kind of, you know, try any kind of risk reduction strategy would seem to be a way to get people to at least consider. Uh, the, yeah, and there have been a bunch of those. I mean, look at China. You've got to have the green QR code yeah. to go anywhere. Yeah, so it'll be like a health me, check. It makes all the sense in the world. There are all these people who are, who are freaked about privacy, and I'm not. There is no privacy. Get over it. You know, the <laughs> government knows everything about you already. Yeah. yeah. So, but but most people, you know, don't think that. Yeah. And they don't they don't like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I saw this article, which I thought was it's just hilarious. You know, I'm a pretty liberal guy, but, you know, the the, the there are a bunch of companies that track your cell phone usage and they know where you work and they know where you live and they know what you're doing and they know everything about you. And they got together and said, you know, we'd love to give our data to somebody who could do track and trace. Hmm. And the ACLU in the U S freaked out and they said, we can't give these guys more power and blah, blah, right. They already have the data. Yeah. Use right. it. You know, it's already there. They know all this stuff. Yeah. And, and see, that's what I wonder if that could be the, I mean, the pinch point is the airlines, at least for international travel to open up everything else. And so you kind of wonder whether it's, because what any investigation I've found around this whole thing, it's, it's there's, there's um, centralized apps by countries and it's a patchwork all over the place. And then there's this notion of decentralized. So like, so like a government would hold the data is what you're saying. Then there's this decentralized where it's kept on a phone and it's encrypted and it's only attached right. to the person's phone, right? And then it's a notification if you've been in the proximity of someone. And so right. this was the, the plan that Apple and Google have kind of right. put together, right. right? And it sort of sounded, at least for an international traveler, you know, at least then you could also, you know, if you're in Iceland or you're, you know, you go to Sweden or something, at least your data would. Follow, Maybe. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think we've had a bunch of different things. Emirates put up, uh, they, they were testing at least, I think it was Emirates or Etihad was testing this new kiosk. Right. That did respiration and, and uh, temperature. Right. And if you flunked, you don't get on. Well, right. that's a good idea. That's right. a start. Yeah. Right. It's a start. Uh, and that would make There's me so feel many better. reasons why you could you have a fever and just have a cold. Yeah. So what? But if I throw you out, at least yeah. the people who are, I mean, you're pissed, but yeah. the people who got on the plane are happy. And, and how about all those over, over 55 year old women that are just getting hot? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My, my, my sister-in-law writes books about menopause. So Yeah, I know. But it's just like, you know, all the, I can, you can just hear the headlines, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, but you know, look, I mean, it, in, in the Arab world, they're just going to do it. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just say, look, we want to, we want people on the plane who are healthy. So yeah. too bad for you. Yeah. Now you could go get a COVID test and come back. Right. Yeah. And say, I've got a test and I'm clean. And then they will let you on with the temperature. But yeah. now Emir I think it was Etihad. Emirates is, was actually testing people. Right. Right. Uh, before the flights. Yeah. No, I think um, it, was, it was Iceland too. It was like saying you have to test to book and then you then get there and they'll test you again. Right. And if, and if you fail, you're kind of in isolation. Well, that's right. And yeah. you know, Hawaii did that. I mean, Hawaii's done the yeah. 14 days yeah. you come out. Yeah. And, and I know Canada right now. I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've got some, you know, I've, I've got a, a speaking thing I'm supposed to be doing in Louisiana in, in the fall. And I'm like, and they're still just sort of bullishly, you know, saying it's, it's going forward. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, right now, well, they probably Canada, in Louisiana, I, they're kind of nuts. Yeah. So they probably yeah. will they might by that time. I mean, we'll see. I think the U S will be changed a lot yeah. by what happens in this Trump rally. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, next week or this week, whatever yeah. it is yeah. two yeah. weeks from that. You know, and if a lot of people get sick, then, you know, he'll still, the emperor will still have no clothes, but maybe people will get some sanity yeah, back. It's, it's unfortunate um, that that might be the You know, and, and people are, you know, the other thing that's going on, of course, are the safe quarters, right? Right. Where, you know, I can go from here to there, maybe, and, yeah. and that's happening in Schengen, right? Right. Um, they're doing some of that. Um, I saw that, that New Zealand today got two cases because really? they let these okay. two women out compassionate they were in quarantine and they compassionately let them out because their father was dying right and they turned out to be positive and infected a whole bunch of people wow did not so know the that. president that. said no more of that you're in you're in right interesting you, because the only people coming to new zealand are new zealanders who are coming back right right they're not letting anybody else well and yeah. they've done such i mean they, they've created their own well they are an island but i mean they've they have literally locked themselves down right and yeah we're talking about that whole um uh 
corridor opening up with Australia. So that probably will, that probably is not going to let that happen anymore. Well, they will after a while because Australia is pretty good shape too. So yeah. I think that'll yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I run a, I'm the chairman of a large boys and girls camp in International Falls, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And we, we have 500 kids normally there in the summer and we can't open. Right. Minnesota hasn't said what they're going to do. But the other big issue is all, it's a canoeing camp. All the trips are in Canada. Yeah. So where are we going to go? Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, as long as things are as being kind of. Oh, absolutely. I mean, to look, us Canada's, looking down, I mean, you're, you're, the U.S. is our greatest neighbor, but we just look at like with. I wouldn't let anybody in from the U.S. <laughs> I, know, I mean, we're, we're being. Just like, we're it's being, like crazy town, right? Like It is crazy town. <laughs> it's stupid. And, uh, yeah. you know. I get we have to open because of the economy, okay, yeah. but you can open smart and you can open stupid. Right, right. And, 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 and there's almost the, even almost this kind of the ethical question right now too, right, is of, of encouraging people to travel internationally. Yes, I get it that we're, you know, we need the economy, we need, we can't, the travel industry can't wait for a vaccine to get going again. Like, obviously that's not going to happen. So it's, it's all measured. But then there's the ethics behind, you know, encouraging or, you know, Right, right. So I think, you know, I, I think what's going to happen in the U.S., uh, you're going to see a lot of road travel. Yeah. Um, and road travel is already 50% of U.S. travel. Mm. Um, so we're going to see a lot more of that. Right. Uh, RVs, rentals are up 400%. Yeah, I was looking, yeah, in Canada, the same thing, right? And, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's my camping, own. RVs. It's my own airplane, it's my own hotel, it's my own restaurant. Yeah. I don't have to right. worry about anybody else. So that, that makes sense. Camping. Right. You know, we'll be up and car camping and all that stuff that you can do and, and right. try to be safe. Um, you know, I live in a tourist town here in Lake Tahoe. So, you know, we see that uh, the only people without masks in the grocery store are the tourists. They're Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but they're, you know, slowing down how many people can be in the beaches. And, right. you know, Nevada is an interesting question because, you know, Vegas is open. Um, it's very different at the Bellagio than in the Cosmo. At the Cosmo, apparently, it's just like it was before. Nobody's the the, the staff are all masked, but none of the guests are masked. Really? Okay. There's no social distancing. They're not doing a thing. At the Bellagio, you know, the, it's every third slot machine and every second mm -hmm. poker player, and they're right. really enforcing. Nobody's wearing masks except the staff. Really, okay. Few, few of the people are. Wow, that's that, that's just kind of a scary prospect. But if you think of right? the kind of people who drink, smoke, and gamble, why would yeah. they wear a mask? I mean, it's not who they I are. I suppose, I suppose. Yeah, and it's also, but even just the whole Vegas atmosphere, right? I mean, add alcohol, like just yeah. the whole the whole notion of distancing and and doesn't. thinking just doesn't. We haven't it. opened the brothels. <laughs> <laughs> officially <laughs> well there are legal brothels in nevada yeah, it's, it's yeah. the only place in the u.s yeah, and yeah. i don't know i guess you wear masks maybe it's kinky i have no idea uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so, so they haven't done that but they've done everything else yeah. and and uh yeah but the problem for vegas is it's a convention town yeah well i mean it, that that's what yeah. it is and right. and you know 80 percent of the people who go there go there in conventions right and they get so that, that ain't happening yeah, they and get their so they, you know, we're going to see out. a lot of bankruptcies out there because it, you know, conventions aren't coming back. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure out. I'm doing it today with my assistant. We're working on, you know, some videos and the emails to try to work with the speakers bureaus. Yeah, to say, and I'm trying to do. You know, I've done a lot of visits of bureaus over the years and buy them lunch and give a pitch and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in to do a pitch about. Look, we have to go create meetings. Yes. You know, forget about waiting for people to call. We have to do them. Yeah. And yeah. so therefore, you know, I've got a topic. Let's have a meeting. I have a virtual meeting. Right. You know, you need to bring your people together and talk about the business post COVID. What are you going to do? Yeah. How are you reacting? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually a really progressive way to think of it. Right. Um, well, yeah, because, because they always had meetings before to, to stimulate their people and get them excited and get them motivated. And now they're all separate. It's even harder. So, but they're not thinking about having a meeting. You know, who wants another Zoom meeting? Well, it's a different kind of Zoom meeting. Yeah. You know? Well, I, you know, and I would venture a guess that this, even this whole technology as we're, you know, a year, you know, this is going to change everything. Uh, and there, yeah. there will be the whole hybrid events, the interaction with people online globally, you know, 
when we're like we're we're here face to face but there's the online people and like the right. whole way that this will be managed will be just blow our mind i'm sure over the next year well yeah and there's so many bad ones i get invited to these webinars you know like 20 a day mm. and they're awful um you know most of them are just slides with a voice right the voice isn't a narrator and you know we're used to television yeah yeah we're so, used to I don't know if you saw what I've, what I've done. I, I can't remember on those videos. So you see the virtual thing that's up there? Um, I, I took a look through at some of your stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't think you saw the virtual stuff. So what I've done, because it's, it's, it's not on the front page yet, but you know, I'm using, I built a studio with a green screen right. and I laid myself, I moved all my slides to half screen and I'm there live with the slides. Right, so they're in your background. Yeah, they're in the background. Okay. That's a, that's they're a, over okay. here. Right, so it's almost and like you are on a stage. So I'm over here and right. they're over here and we're together. Right. Um, you know, it's a little like Image Mag with the slides overlaid. And then, you know, I move off stage. Right. And, you know, when I do q and I'm in a different place. Right. And uh, it, so far, people are watching. Responding, yeah. You know, now my brother's a speaker and he's doing it differently. He lives out in Molokai. Um, and he's That's really true. worried about technology. And this whole thing is a high wire act anyway. It's nuts right. because something always happens. And that's your brother who's the photographer? Yeah. yeah. And so what he's doing is he's videoing his speech because he never changes his much. Right. And sending the video. And then he does a live intro. Okay. They roll the video and then he does Q&A. And nobody knows the difference. I can't tell. Right. It's not a bad idea, actually. No, and another friend of ours, Dan Burris, has yeah. done that because then yeah. you get out of all the tech. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Then, then you, then you can control the actual delivery, and then, but they still get the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and they don't know. Yeah. You're the same suit, you know, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Just make sure you haven't had a haircut in the. <laughs> yeah, and you got, you know, you're wearing shorts down below, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Yeah. So I've so got the, another interview coming up yeah, here in, at the top yeah. of the hour. So yeah. No, no. I I, I, I totally appreciate happen. your time. I sure. was just. I I mean, can I just ask you one last question? Please. What What would it take to get you on a plane again? Well, I'm I'm the wrong demographic. You know, I'm 72 and and you know had radiation. So, um, you know, I wouldn't have a problem getting on a one hour flight right now because they're empty. Yeah. You know, in six months I might. Mm. Right. It might right. be worse. So I told right. you I would fly now. I'm not going to fly later. Mm. You know, Interesting. Okay. Um, I would fly. Would I fly internationally, you know, in a in first class, which does hardly exists with single single row life flats? Yeah, I probably would. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I could sleep with a mask. I figured that out, so I CPAP or something. Um, <laughs> luckily, I don't have that. Um, yeah, I might. But then, you know, where am, where am I going to go? What country am right. I going to go to? Where like uh, I I've gone four times to this wonderful place called Sha S H A in Spain. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an incredible spa, but it, it, and they they really work on eating and and all kinds of disorders. And I I've lost forty pounds since I've gone there, mm -hmm. and I'd love to go back, but it is so intimate. I mean, it's seaweed massage and underwater massage and all this exercise and all this stuff. I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't. Yeah can't do that you know right so uh, it, it really is a mix of yeah like you said it's the the distancing the time on the plane but also then the destination you know what's what are you going to do yeah so if you're coming to right. lake tahoe and you're going to go hiking yeah okay probably yeah. do that yeah you yeah. know if you're going to go skiing right you know i think skiing is probably fine that's going to be an interesting though with gondolas but you know that's another story yeah with gondola, but, but a lot of places still have chairs yeah. You know, and chairs, you know, it's a couple of people and you got, you could wear a mask on the chair and it wouldn't probably, you know, out there very long. Yeah. And then you're separated, right? And they could put two people instead of three. And so they tr were trying some of that before they get shut down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if you, if you're going to New York to go shopping and eating, maybe not. Maybe not. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm happy to well, help. I, I appreciate your time, Terry. This is. Well, a, it's good a, to meet you. And, and well, your first, book, is, your first book was Carry On Queen? Uh, no, it's, uh, the first book was uh, Five Minute Marketing. Oh, okay. And then the second one was uh, Word of Mouth, Mouse, and Mobile. So but, it's around the whole marketing strategy work. 
But Carrie on Queen is a blog or what you call uh, yeah, it? Is. Yeah, so Carrie on Queen is my travel writing blog. So it's, I call it the side, this, like, it's not the yeah, side, side hustle. It, yeah. it is, it's something that, which is actually, uh, in, curiously enough during uh, this whole, this whole disruption I've, with a couple of pieces I've written, uh, the traffic on that one has, you know, exploded. Oh, I would think. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, cause I've kind of combined the marketing with the travel stuff. So, um, right. so I'm, I'm having fun with it and, uh, Good for you. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, maybe I'll see you again on Fridays. Yeah. Sounds great. At the At Zoom the blog. Zoom yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Thanks. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks, Terry. Bye-bye.